In the realm of cinematic expectations, there are few emotions as potent as the thrill of anticipation, and as a devoted film enthusiast myself, the mere mention of Argyle had sent waves of excitement through my veins. The trailers promised a quirky, comedic, action-packed adventure, the star-studded cast hinted at powerhouse performances, the premise held the potential for a conventional yet still worthwhile narrative. However, as the credits rolled and the lights came up, I had to be honest with myself. What was supposed to be a cinematic triumph turned out to be an unfortunate misstep in the annals of filmmaking. A journey from fervent anticipation to the bitter taste of disappointment. I'll be dissecting the highs that misled us and the lows that left us yearning for what could have been. So welcome back to Words of Paradise, I'm your host Leon Idol, and today we are going to be reviewing Argyle. Before we do, hit that subscribe button. I'm a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day, unless I'm giving you these brave and bold reviews, such as what I'm doing right now. So hit the subscribe button. It helps the channel grow. And let's get into this review. Directed by Matthew Vaughn, the man behind Kingsman, X-Men First Class, and Kick-Ass, the film actually starts off relatively competent, with a cheesy scene of Henry Cavill as a fictional spy a la James Bond or Ethan Hunt, with the added twist that it's all taking place in the pages of a novel. And I mean, that's no surprise, as the marketing made that obvious from the jump, and seeing Cavill and John Cena intentionally overact and ham it up to reinforce the elements of fiction, I'll be honest, it was charming. I was actually convinced that I was gonna have a good time with this film, and that didn't stop as the movie progressed initially. It soon cuts to the real world, we see Ellie, played by the creature that ate Bryce Dallas Howard, doing a press tour for her latest book in the Argyle series. While not necessarily a bad scene, it does give away one key problem the movie's gonna have right off the bat. One of the men at her signing asks her on a date, and while you can't blame a guy for shooting a shot, it did make me wonder, what is this conventionally attractive young male seeing this middle-aged, frumpy author? Like, she turns him down because romance isn't in the cards for her, and she retires back to her home to write the next entry into the series. Uh, she's suffering from writer's block. There's actually some really cool transitions in this scene. Seeing Cavill as Argyle replay the same scene multiple times with different outcomes as the background fades away and we see him standing over the pages of the book. I mean, the editing here is unique. I've got to give it credit. Visually, the beginning of this film is interesting, and it maintains that for a little while. It's nothing we haven't seen before, but it's also not tropes we see very often. It's good enough to get the job done, and the scene ends with Ellie agreeing to go see her mother to rework the ending of the book. That said, as Ellie boards the train to go visit her, she's approached by yet another handsome fit male. And it was at this point where the red flags truly started to go off. Like, this is gonna be a movie that tries to make us find a woman who is the definition of average attractive, isn't it? It wouldn't be a bad thing if it weren't for the twist later on in the film, and I do use that word lightly. Instead, she shoes the man off only for another passenger, equally as unremarkable looking as her, to sit across from her. Now this is Aiden, played by Sam Rockwell, who reveals himself to be a spy and that everyone on the train is out to get her. And before I go further, I will say... Sam Rockwell is probably the best part of the movie. I mean, he absolutely carries the comedic moments perfectly, and in a movie that is a comedy, it really all does fall on his shoulders. So I will give him props there, because that's about as nice as I'm going to be going forward. It's got a fun action scene that ensues, where every time Ellie blinks, Aiden is replaced by Argyle, who she's witnessing fight off this locomotive full of trained assassins. There's numerous quick cuts in the sequence while obnoxious modern music plays, but it wasn't terribly bothersome as it's actually done with purpose. It's done to show Aiden continuously swapping with Argyle while Ellie tries to wrap her head around the situation. The scene does admittedly go on too long, and I found myself just hoping it would wrap up so we can move the story along. And that's one of the many problems with this film. The pacing. It is all over the place. I mean, I found the choice to have the character switching to be fun. The gimmick alone is not enough to save this scene from overstaying its welcome. And you're gonna get to see that a lot. I mean, there is so much going on in this film. So many tonal shifts. It is jarring, and the movie does not justify it. Sam Rockwell, also while funny, does seem horribly miscast. I mean, he's a good actor, but having him play a super spy when he looks like a cross between Dana Carvey and Tom Cruise as the most out-of-shape, in-shape person you've ever seen was a weird choice that I never fully adjusted to. That said, he is the best character of those that exist in the real world in the film. I, I do want to stress that. But from here, I'm just going to give you the cliff notes and the breakdowns of certain moments, because... This was a 2 hour and 20 minute movie. It didn't need to be. So many scenes go on for far longer than they need to, with several of them being exposition dumps. They could have easily shaved off 30 minutes of this movie. It wouldn't have made it good, but it certainly would have made it more tolerable. We find out that Ellie's books are paralleling a real espionage event that's happening in real time, and Aiden wants to use her to figure out how to continue his mission to bring down a rogue agency. This is where we're introduced to Brian Cranston as the main villain, and unlike Cena and Cavill, 
Cranston's hammy acting is abysmal to watch. It's not like the dude can't act, we've all seen Breaking Bad, but the cheesy acting works for them because they are fictional characters in a book that keeps appearing in Ellie's mind in the real world. Cranston is the in-universe bad guy, yet he plays it so cartoony that one would think his prep work for the role was just watching reruns of Masters of the Universe and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The action scenes also get progressively worse. The second big fight scene follows the exact same format, Aiden switching places with Argyle while another forgettable pop song plays. Take out the bad guys and quick cut editing with a splash of shaky cam, rinse, repeat. And there's also a real overuse of CGI that just gets more and more noticeable as the film goes on, you could have done all of this practically and it would have been a-okay. Like, give us a chance to focus on the stunt performers and the work that they're doing. Stop trying to give us this visual treat of computer-generated stuff that everyone knows is ugly to look at. We've been thinking it's ugly to look at since the MCU. Like, give us realism, please. When you're trying to make a film that starts off in a book and you want to juxtapose that with real life, don't make the real life stuff look so cartoony. This is followed by a third act breakup, which is always an annoying trope, but made even worse here because it happens in the second act. Not only do we know that Aiden and Ellie are going to reconcile, but the way it happens is ridiculous. Ellie hearing and misunderstanding a phone call between Aiden and a yet unknown figure, leading her to believe Aiden is the real villain. Uh, first of all, the word choice Aiden uses are words that no one would use in close proximity to someone they're supposed to be protecting, ever. And second, why did he not send a text? Like, like, why even make the call if you're trying to be secretive? Like, I thought you were a spy, homie. Wouldn't the silent method of a text message be to your benefit? Samuel L. Jackson is introduced as the man on the phone and the only other person Aiden is working with to bring down Brian Cranston and his organization. He's also completely unnecessary to the film, as the only reason for being in the story is for Aiden and Ellie to get him stolen access codes that will prove government corruption, as well as for him to provide the truth of the movie's twist. Again, I use that word loosely. Now, why can only Sam Jackson do this? Like, like why can't Aiden? Honestly, it's probably just because Matthew Vaughn liked working with Sam Jackson and Kingston, because there's no logical reason story-wise for him to be here. Then we get it. The big twist, which I'm going to spoil for you, so if you don't want to know, skip to this time code. Alrighty. You, you ready? You good? Argyle is actually Rachel Kyle. R. Period. Kyle. You get it? Yeah, Ellie was the super spy all along, and her books were actually written about her own repressed memories after an accident in one of her missions, and Aiden was the man that trained her, and also her lover, and while I did suspect this, I thought, there is no way they would do something this stupid. Once again, I have overestimated modern Hollywood. Like, like you cannot convince me that the woman whose enemies are treadmills and salad is not only a super spy, but supposedly the best spy in the whole organization. And from here, the movie went from mediocre to full-on nosedive into horrendous. We get yet another drawn-out action scene that uses another generic pop song. That is the third time, only this time it is done even worse because they make it a full-on dance number. There's all sorts of colored CGI smoke filling these hallways and they start doing the twist in these various ballroom dancing methods while shooting machine guns and killing mountains of dudes, hordes of guys, while also spraying bullets of hearts in the air so they could have their nice romantic moment. It went from being a, a almost realistic spoof of a spy movie to being a full-on cartoon in a matter of three and a half seconds. It was jarring. Also from here on out, Aiden is the comic relief and is completely incompetent despite being a killing machine the entire movie, having Ellie save him at pretty much every turn here on out, even resigning himself to be killed by her at the end of the movie when she is mind controlled into fighting him, only for the laziest ass pull of the entire movie. A third partner, who's barely been mentioned up to this point, a strong, young, super genius black hacker girl to show up and save Aiden from Ellie, revealing she's not been dead the last five years, as they all had previously assumed, and the movie ends with them uploading the data that proves the corruption to the whole world. Uh, by the way, how do you think the world reacts to the bombshell news that a covert private agency has been assassinating world leaders, rigging elections, and committing international terrorism? Don't know, because the movie doesn't tell us! Ellie just writes the final Argyle book, and the film ends! 
I have not been this disappointed in a movie I was looking forward to in a long time, and I was really looking forward to this movie. Also, considering it made $18 million on its opening weekend compared to a $200 million budget, I'm going to wager a guess and say if you're watching this, you probably haven't seen the film, and you're probably thinking about keeping it that way. Argyle may be the talk of the town, but regrettably, it is a conversation full of unfulfilled promises and missed opportunities. But those are just my opinions. Let me know yours in the comments down below, or let me know on X where you can find me at Bolt the Word. And please do subscribe. I am a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day, except for when I'm giving you guys scripted reviews like this. I hope you enjoyed it. If you saw the movie, I want to know what you thought. You probably didn't see the movie, but, but again, if you did, let me know in the comments down below, and let me know your thoughts on other movies as well as subscribe to the channel, because again, I can only do this thanks to your support, and I truly appreciate it. You can also find me on Instagram at words of paradise underscore Leon, where I cover everything from movies, music, Magic the Gathering, anime, you name it. Check out the merch store. Get yourself a Words of Paradise shirt. I got merch now. Shirts, mugs, you can find it in one of the links around here and remember it's all here in the nerdosphere this has been words of paradise